Yeah, what are you doing in Gimlet? Um, I'm working on this podcast. <laughs> I see. So you're a producer on it. Yeah. Figured might as well take advantage of it, go on dates. I'm like one of the only single people on our team. Ah. And like, like in edits, they're like, Julia, you're dating. What do you know? Hey, it's Jane Marie, and you're listening to DTR, Tinder's podcast about defining relationships in the digital age. Today, we're turning the mics on one of our own producers, Julia. You've heard Julia this season forcing other daters to bear their souls. And it turns out it can be a special kind of hell to be single going on first dates while working on a podcast about single people going on first dates. Julia is drowning in it all day at work and then actually living it in her free time. Dating, which is like all I've been talking about for like the past three months and it's horrible. Yeah, it's gonna be I used weird. to think about other things. I used to like ha- I used to think- care about world events. So today on the show, we're going to try to help Julia tackle this one big confusing dating issue she's been struggling with. It's something a lot of people have a hard time navigating, and it's something a lot are getting wrong. And that is that Julia wants something real, a long-term partner. She's in her mid-30s, and she is ready. But how do you tell someone you've just met that you're over flings and commitment phobes? Should you just blurt it out on the first date? Isn't that supposed to terrify dudes? Or do you never say it and wait for them to get there, which they probably won't. So why waste your time? That's today on DTR. To start out, we wanted to get a sense of what Julia's dates are like even before we swiped for her. So we decided to follow her on some dates, get the lay of the land. And there was this one moment that stood out to us from all the dates we sent her on. This one exchange with a guy named Ian. I've told many friends about it, and they are equally like, what the fuck? I think this moment perfectly encapsulates just what Julia is up against. Listen closely, because it goes by really fast. It happened when Ian and Julia were strolling through a park. Yeah. I never hang out in this park. In this park? Yeah. Just because of all the, you know, dominant culture is sort of like a kid zone. Oh. I'm not afraid of being around kids. It's cool. It's just I just don't hang out in this park because I don't live here, I guess. I'm like working. That was it. To us, it sounded like small talk about parks. But to Ian, the conversation was about his entire future. This is Ian talking to our producer mid-date about what he called the kids thing. Yeah, the kids thing. She was like, she was like, I like kids. Did you read something into that when she said I like kids? Totally, totally. I read I what I I did read into that, and I also read her, you know, expressing, like, a first, like, impression about that. Totally. Completely read Can into that. Can you say more? Like, what do you mean? Oh, like, I feel like, I feel like, I read in that she, like, wants to have kids later on. But from that one, from, from that, that one. From that one comment, yeah. Neurotic? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. This is what Julia's dealing with, what we're all dealing with. A woman can't even say that she doesn't mind walking in a park near children Without her date assuming, that means she wants a baby put in her by him immediately. For fuck's sake, you guys, grow up. Julia's style up until now has been to level with the Ians of the world right from the outset, which she did at the end of their date. Um, I, I, want, I want someone who like has their shit together, I guess, in some ways. I'm like ready. You're ready to be in like a committed relationship? That's what I take that to mean. With... Once I find that person, like, yeah. I'm not like anyone, I'm like, hey, sure, yeah. you know, obviously that's why I'm like dating a lot is yeah. to find the person I gel with. But yeah, I'm like, I'm like fully cooked, I guess. Yeah, I'm ready. We're, we're kind of in different zones. We're kind of in different zones. I'm like learning to decode the things that I'm attracted to. And you're like, I want to be with somebody who like wants to be with me. <laughs> what do you, what do you mean? You're thinking in terms of, like, this is what I want my life to look like with a person. And I'm thinking more in terms of, like, this is, like, you're thinking about, like, being in a relationship. And I'm talking about, like, like the spark. Um, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I'm also looking for a a spark. It's not like I'm not. Yeah, naturally. Yeah, 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 yeah. The spark Ian's talking about seems like code for, I'm just looking to hook up. And Julia's like, yeah, me too. For life. We all drop these kinds of hints early on. Maybe not this early on, Julia. But it's all part of defining the relationship. 
After the date, Julia had a lot to say about this whole spark thing. Like, it's not because I say I'm looking for a partner, it's that I don't want a passionate relationship that starts with a spark, which I feel like whenever I say that, people think that I just want to, like, make stew with someone on a Friday night and watch Netflix for the rest of my life. And, like, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. It's just, like, eventually I would, I like partnership, but it's not like I don't want to go dancing till 4 a.m. and make out with someone in a club. I do. When I say long-term, I don't mean, like, boring relationship shit. I mean a fun partner that I, but a partner, like, one person. But that, this is, like, this is then, I guess, my issue is that, like, I want to be very direct with people about what I'm looking for, but I don't want to be too direct to the point that they go running for the hills. So this is our mission. How to be direct and upfront about what you want without scaring the shit out of everyone you meet. How to say, I want a fun, exciting, sexy relationship. These are tricky questions. So to help me help Julia, we called in the big guns. Boop, 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 boop. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Jason Manzukis, comedian, podcaster, and star of the big and small screen. I'm Jason Manzukis. Uh, I'm 44 years old. What, are we, what is that? Why, why am I stating my name? Uh-oh. <laughs> what do you want from me? I want you to... What is what's happening here? You're introducing yourself to my audience. Oh, are we rolling? Yes. Jason is everywhere these days. He's a co-host of the podcast, How Did This Get Made? And a regular on Comedy Bang Bang. He played the wild card friend on the TV show, The League. Jason's kind of like the human version of when you learn a new word and then suddenly you start hearing that word everywhere. And I believe that Jason Mansukas is the only person on earth who can help Julia. That's not true. Um, but he was available to come into the studio and he's really smart and funny. After the break, Jason Mansukas is going to swipe for Julia and fix everything. You said specifically that you have a physical type, but I don't know that you've mentioned what it is. I guess, yeah, like, a, mu- I I would like some, like, defin- physically, like, some definition, I guess, yeah, in the guy. Ripped but, up. Like, no, like a no, ripped no. gym rat. No, Like a wrong. ripped up gym rat, wrong. like shredded bro, <laughs> no. like like CrossFit. Jersey Shore. Uh, P90X. No. Gym Tan Laundry. Don't do GTL. it. GTL. No. <laughs> This episode of DTR is brought to you by Hawthorne Cologne. Hawthorne knows that not everyone is an expert when it comes to buying fragrances. Um, it asks me for my name. It says, pleased to meet you. First, how well do you know your fragrances? I'm going to go with Clueless. That's Gimlet Creative associate producer Jorge Estrada, who sat down to take Hawthorne's Cologne questionnaire, which uses body chemistry and lifestyle data to deliver tailored scents. What's your drink of choice? Uh, I'm a fan of a nice cold beer. 75% of taste is aroma, which Hawthorne takes into account when matching you with one cent for work and one cent for play. Okay, cool. So I just took it. Um, Wow, it nailed me. So they suggested one bottle that's for work um, that's citrusy and woody. And for play, they suggested a woody and fresh scent. It doesn't look like either one of these are anything that my dad would wear, so that's... Great. Um, It's definitely a plus. Discover your scent today by going to hawthorne.co and use code DTR to get 15% off your purchase. That's hawthorne with an E dot CO and use code DTR to get 15% off your purchase. Okay, we're back and we're swiping for Julia. Hello, Julia. Hello. Jason Manzook is here. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we're going to find her a husband. Great. (laughs) Whoa. Here are some things to know about Jason. He is single. And despite being a modern man, he doesn't have his own internet presence. Like, at all. He currently uses zero social media. No dating apps, no Twitter, no Facebook. Nothing. So he scouts out potential mates in the real world. I know, it's crazy. 
I run into people in the grocery store all the time, which I love. Because what's the, here's the thing. <laughs> if I'm going to try and talk to a cute girl at the grocery store, I want to be able to see what's in her cart. I always look in people's carts. Yeah. And, you know, what if it's like full of eggs? Just like all <laughs> eggs because I'm allergic to eggs. All eggs. I would be like, oh, this person's coming for me. <laughs> Just trying to kill me. I wouldn't even want to like shop near that person. <laughs> Um, what would be in the cart that would draw you to someone? Oh, boy. What have you seen where you're just like, boy, oy, 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 oy. <laughs> Oh, well, if somebody had like two bags of cotton candy grapes, I'd be like, I'm on board for everything you are up to, lady. Two you bags. You get it. Two bags of cotton candy grapes because she knows these are a varietal that is in season for a very short amount of time. So she's getting while the getting's good. I can only do like three or four of those at once. And then I'm like, Oh, a cotton candy stomach ache. Really? Yeah, like I, I, I can't disconnect. Cotton candy stomach grape nailed it. <laughs> I can't dissociate the flavor from actual cotton candy. Oh, really? Yeah, like oh, that's it's so funny. It very much feels like have I just you tried had any too of the other candy. like um, um, the teeny tiny ones, the teeny tiny ones, or the witch's finger ones, oh, the you, long ugh. and the weird ones. Those ones are too creepy. They're super creepy that they're delicious. Welcome back to Grape Talk. <laughs> I'm here with Jane Marie. We're talking about grape varietals. Uh, you know, this is the two-hour podcast where we break it down. Sponsored by the Grapery. The Grape. True. Real name. Real name of the of the, the farm that puts out. Grapes. That put no. They they put out cotton candy grapes. Don't worry. I've been on their website. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So you, so that's what you're looking for is a woman who has as much. I'm gets looking as excited for like, about cotton I'm candy grapes. I'm looking for a cool, funny, intelligent, busty grape fan. <laughs> I'm sure there's if one. If you're out there, ladies. <laughs> I'm sure there's one listening right now. If you're out there, ladies, just hit me up on on Jane's Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk to Julia for just a minute about Julia. what what Julia's looking Julia for. Julia wearing an NPR One T-shirt, right? I know, it's such a door. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> What a <laughs> Come on, Julia. Let's um, do this. Yeah. All right, Julia, how old are you? I am 34. Mm-hmm. And I'm single. Since when? <laughs> um, For like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. What happened? <laughs> um, let's just get right to it. No, yeah, great. let's do it. Break yeah, it all right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was in a like three, three years and some change long relationship. And so we were living in upstate New York and we beautiful yeah it was great uh i was had a job there um my boyfriend at the time had moved up there to be with me um and uh he went to seattle to go to his sister's wedding never came back yeah yeah he never came back he and then he called he didn't call me for like a week and a half um and then he called me and said i'm not going to be coming back these are the moves that people make that are absolute insanity to me. It's it's a joke. It's a punchline. You know what I mean? It's a that's a crazy move. Yeah. 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 Just to go and never come back. He went out for cigarettes. And I was just like, well, I was like, I'll come to Seattle. Like you don't have to come here. Mm -hmm. And he was but at the at the time I was like I was like, hey, you don't like when he called me, he's like, I don't want to come back. I was like, well I by the way, just by your impression, I don't like good riddance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good riddance for a guy who's like, mm-hmm. if you're with a guy who's like, mm-hmm, like you're with a baby. Yeah. You're with a man baby, and that's not. In, that's not. Uh, I'm not interested. How was he? Your age? Older? No. Younger? He was younger. He was younger. Than oh, was. So this is a hard pass. Honestly, he sounds like a dum dum. Frankly, but also some of the blame goes to you, Julia, because like it, it, he's too young to be re- ready for all of it. Yeah, he's too young to like move to a place. He's too young to be. Is too young? I don't know how young he was, but like too young. Yep. Yeah. To be ready, he's like because guys are straight up dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Say, yeah. More. Right. Respect, Say more in that respect. Say more emotionally. Yeah. Emotionally speaking. Julia is 5'10". She has medium-length brown hair with these cute, soft bangs. We asked her about her physical type. What is she looking for? You said specifically that you have a physical type, but I don't know that you've mentioned what it is. I guess, yeah, like, I I would like some, like, definite, physically, like, some definition, I guess, in a guy. Yeah, ripped up. No, like a no, ripped no. gym rat. No, like a wrong. ripped up gym rat, wrong. like shredded bro, <laughs> no. like like CrossFit, Jersey Shore, uh, P90X, no. gym tan laundry. Don't do GTL. it. No. <laughs> 
How do you feel about bald dudes, not bald dudes? Um, preferably not bald. I like a head of hair. I sure. would rather, I like a, a nice head of hair that I can put my fingers through. Okay. Beard, no beard. No beard. Wow. Wow. Ouch. I can't help but like <laughs> take a real hit on that one. <laughs> Are there deal breakers though? So like sense of humor, somebody who's like game. Who's game, who's who's smart, who like is really into something that they do. Like okay. whatever it is, if they're like really good at it and they're just like NASCAR. Close up magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are these for, are these two things you would say yes um, to? I, I, except for those two things. Okay. Right. See, now we've got limits. <laughs> right. So like um like I dated an urban planner and that was that was like interesting because he like knew a lot about bike lanes and like would tell you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're really yeah. putting this guy on blast. Yeah. Um or you know, just like think like that to me is attractive if you're just yeah. like I'm good at sure. this and I can tell. Yeah. Men only, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh age range. 34, 32? I would say 32. Okay. I think 32 is like when men are fully realized. Nope. Mm, that's guess again. Name. Nope. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm doomed. Uh, for Jason's sake, I'm going to go up to 44 for Aww. you. 44? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say 42. I was going to say a 10-year, but 44. Great. Yeah. Let's do it. You're great. I'm 44. I'm terrific. But sadly, I have a beard. <laughs> so Meh. I guess I'm not deserving of love, <laughs> Julia. Okay, on to her photos. One of them we really liked. It was a full body shot of her in front of the Ferris wheel at Coney Island, which was lovely. But then, uh, I, I can't even. Is this you and your dad? It's not. <laughs> okay. But it's her and another man, you know? Okay. And it, a young man, and it looks like it could be a boyfriend or something. Or an ex. Or an ex Is it your ex? Yeah, it is. What oh. the fuck? Julia? No one Julia? Knows. Julia. No one knows. Julia. Julia. No okay. one knows. The no. podcast starts no. now. <laughs> the podcast starts now. I want to ask you a question, Julia. What? what on earth do you think you're saying to people other than, here's a picture of me having obviously love chemistry with another man? Yep. I do you? I did not think that that photo depicted. That. It's a well, false. Also, what do you? Wait, what wait, do you wait. think that? What do you think that? Why did you choose that photo? Because I like skiing. <laughs> I don't know, Julia. It feels like you're maybe not. Then open. why didn't you crop him out? There's ample space to crop. Oh, because it's like takes a lot of time to like, crop. No, it like, doesn't. Julia, no, I'm gonna argue. I'm gonna argue that this is a defense mechanism, a real kind of like I, I'm not gonna take this seriously because I would I would think you weren't over this guy. Yeah. If too. you're like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, I have six pictures to tell the world who I am, and one of them is with my ex-boyfriend, then you are somebody who is not over that boyfriend. You're saying one of the most, here are the most important things to me. Adventure, fun, uh, uh, outdoors, skiing, uh, dog park, blah, 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 and this guy. <laughs> yep. He, he is one of the most important things to you. He's one of the six things that you're telling the world is this guy and his dumb mustache. <laughs> Can you zoom? I want to. Oh man, this dummy, this fucking dude. I don't like him. I, I, oh yeah, this is this is the and one look that how went close to, he is to the edge. You could have cropped him out and still had so much skiing picture. Yeah. And what are you, Julia? Yeah. I want you to do some real private reflection though on whether or not you are ready for a relationship if this is what you're putting into the world. Okay. All right, we're gonna start swiping. Cute. Um, I like oh, this but he's, guy. He's, he's a baldy. Bold. I don't care. I think he's cute too. I think. Oh, and he's outdoors. Outdoors fishing. What's he do? What does uh, he say? It says normal. If that's relative, guy looking to go out and meet new people with the future in mind. With the future in mind. Boom. Yes. Swipe yes. 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 Swipe yes. He the, he basically is he like loves the ocean. He basically act, his actually, his description everything. is like I'm a normal guy, which is basically what you said. Yeah. And Except he likes going and I'm outdoors. gonna I'm not gonna lie to you here, Julia. You're gonna have to really wrap your mind around the fact that this dude is straight up bald and has a beard. Yeah. <laughs> so you are fucked. But he's 42 and seems to have like a ripped up dad bod. Yep. He's a, he's a filmmaker. Um, Great. He this guy a gets a hard man. yes from me. Me too. A very hard yes. Like very a hard. rock hard. Like yeah. rock hard, like cutting diamond hard uh, yes. Oh, he's, no, he's cute. Okay. okay. He's cute. All right. Boyfriend material. Okay, that's good. Great. Boyfriend material. Yeah. He wants a re serious relationship. He makes great French toast. That's great. He makes great French toast. Okay. No, he's like an he's like a Brooklyn indie rock dude. Yep. Yeah. Right. But he says boyfriend material, which is what we need. Sure. We want someone. But who's... also, like that that doesn't matter, because there are people out there <gasps> who think. 
It's a match. Fuck yes. Because here's the thing. There are going to be guys out there who think they're boyfriend material but are not going to be yeah. for Julia. And there are guys that don't think they are and, they and are, are going to be won over by Julia. So you, I don't think you can. But I don't I'm think saying, that's a thing. I do want to go for people that are saying they were serious. Guys that uh, mention if, the if, idea. If, if anybody is like expressly like looking for casual hookups, I think no swipey. But if they're if no they swipey. are, <laughs> I think if they are neither nor. Uh, okay, keep going. What else do we have? Artist, going on? designer. Oh. He really likes balloons. Yeah, no, this is. Oh, He's no, a no, balloon no. artist. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, then that makes more sense. He's okay. a balloon okay. artist. That's a thing. Wow. Are you into it? That's cute. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's like so. That's a cool job, I guess. <laughs> Look at he's a balloon artist, like a for real balloon even know artist. That's a thing. Let's fucking match it. That's that's okay. I love it. it. I here's what I wish. I wish one of these pictures didn't have a balloon in it. <laughs> um, nope. this man is nope. too sweaty. No, nope. yeah, very, he's very so sweaty picture, in there. Oh my your god. Your first picture can't be. Oh. This situation. <laughs> This is your shredded gym rat. Oh my god, this yes. is so funny. Match that no, 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 dude. no, I want to see more photos. Is, oh, yep, and it says, more photos. should I kick your ass in bowling? Yes. Yes, he should. No. He's an artist slash poet. No. no. That hat, no, that No, he's writing in this photo, no. no. Oh my god, this is so funny. What? Fun. This is some of his art, guys. Guys, no, this is a no. What are people up to? <laughs> What oh, no. are this guy's like? This is he put his profile together and that was it. <laughs> Wowee. I mean, it's not like he put a picture up there with his ex boyfriend in the picture, Julia. Oh my God. So we get some matches, but we still hadn't really gotten to that thing Julia struggles with how to be her authentic and honest self about where she is right now in her life without guys getting all weird about it. Julia told us about her date with Ian, about how no one gets it, that she does want to go out dancing, and she does want to make out and have sex and have fun, all while knowing it's leading somewhere, that making stew and watching Netflix are also in the cards. Jason and I weren't on the same page about this at first. I feel as though the question, what are you looking for, is inappropriate for a first date. Whoa. Because I don't, in the context that we're speaking of, which is a strange, like two strangers meeting for the first time for like a 90 minute walk around a neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like, I think at that point, you're still strangers. You don't know. And so like, for you to say, for you to then like intimate like, is this the thing that is forever? See, I don't take it that way. I no. take it as yeah. I take it as like my intention is to find a partner. I see. It doesn't necessarily mean it's you. Yes. But I want you to know that I am the sort of person that wants to be in a long-term see, committed I would think relationship. The question would be if That's because you're a narcissist. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, <laughs> no, no, but I I know I think this is with with How dare you? No, but with all the guys that I've been talking to, I think that they think that I'm saying it with them. Right. And well, I'm that's, like, that's no. what I'm that's what I'm reacting to. What no. I'm reacting to is if you were to ask me on a first date, could you see this working out forever, which is like the tacit underlying point of that question. I don't think that's what it is though. No. That's really? not the point. No, no, it's not the point. The yeah. point okay. is the point is to find out well and I you know and it's good to know that you're taking it that way. That's I very think a good lot information. of people probably do. I uh I think that th- it's good to know that you're taking it that way so that we can stop maybe stop doing that. Wait, you Julia. do that too, Jane. Yeah. I do it too. I mean, I yeah. I just want I I don't want to mess around. I don't want to waste my time. And with, with and I agree who... with you in terms of you're saying like there are guys on there who are like I'm poly or I'm not looking for. I don't think those are worth your time at all. Mm-hmm. But like if you, I'm just saying if you're on a date with someone and you don't know where it's you, on a first date, you don't know where it's going. And and I also think like to ask of somebody to predict when they are going to be ready to settle down. When they themselves might not know, Julia might not know. Julia thinks right now she's ready to settle down. But she might still be four years from it. Like, she might still be working stuff out, working things through. I don't know. I'm just, I just feel like, do we ever know what we're looking for is imminent? No. 
<laughs> Go ahead, Julia. Defend your position. No, I don't. I think that that's true. We do not know. But I do know what I like and I do like partnership. And that's sure. something that's very clear to me. And I and I that's what I'm that's why I'm going on dates. Like, why else would I be going on dates and like putting myself through swiping? Right. And, like, and there people have other reasons for going on dates. And so you want to make sure you're yeah, on, like the, on the dates for the same reason. Like you don't want to be going on dates and starting a, a relationship with someone who definitely doesn't want to ever get married. Or just wants to have sex with you. But you might be losing some people who are like, you might be losing some people who are like, oh, I don't know yet. I just met you. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I I don't know. I mean, I'm open to it, but we've literally only known each other two hours. Right. And are we going to be compatible enough to, to, to do what is a very difficult thing to put two individual lives together into a third thing, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think the, I think, I think we can do ourselves a disservice by trying to tell new people the end of our story before we're actually telling the beginning of our story. Wow. Yeah. My mind. Are you okay, Julia? I think you're right. And it's fear. It's all fear because you're, you're afraid. What if I fall for this person and they don't fall for me? So what you're saying is that I'm like at the beginning of another adventure and of like learning. And You're at the beginning of another adventure, but you're also in the middle of the whole game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're, it's, you can look at it, you you can look at it as, oh, I'm at the beginning again, which sucks. And I hate that. Like, uh, but you are not, you have not been reduced to zero. You are still in the middle of the longer game. You still now know, you know so much cumulative information from the last three and a half years or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I agree. That's, that's probably, yeah. And I think that I probably just need to like, I think what you're saying is I just, just should like chill a little bit and just like enjoy that process of like getting to know someone that I'm attracted to. Um, and not, and not have, and not worry so much about like whether or not they're going to fuck me over. Um, yeah. I, I am like worried about that. I just like don't want that to happen again. And so I, I think, yeah, I'm like trying to be like, are you, are, are you going to run away from me, I guess? But yeah. you you couldn't figure that out the last time on the first date. It took three years to figure that out. Yep. Yeah. And so who, and there's no way to know. Whoever the next guy that comes into your life is, if you are operating from the point of view of you're looking for the warning signs of getting fucked over, like you're, you not trusting him will feel palpable to him. Yeah. You know, like you're don't make the mistake of taking the – very valid uh, anxieties and uh, uh, worries that this experience has created in you and pouring those into some new guy, you know, who's who's not guilty of doing that to you, yeah. you know? Yeah, let, Just let it be what it is, mm-hmm. which is sniffing each other out. It's basically you're at the dog park sniffing each other's butts. That's all it is. So, like, get that nose in those butts. <laughs> it's hard not to have someone that you were... To not have like intimacy, like not have a best friend ish, you know. So it's like I that's what I miss, right? So I miss, I, I miss that, and I think about that a lot. Yeah, no, life is life is better when you have a partner and when you have a teammate, you know. But also, I think as much as that is true, it is attractive to be someone who can stand strong on their own. And has good friendships. And yeah. Ha- yeah, and and has, exactly, whose, whose friends provide them intimacy, whose family provides them intimacy. Yeah. Someone for whom their life is... Uh, Complete is in that well way. Well-rounded, yeah. you know, in that, re- in that respect. And, and, and that, 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 so, like, in other words, that, that the loss of that ex-boyfriend, dumb mustache, let's call him, that the loss of dumb mustache hasn't left you at so much of a disadvantage because he shouldn't take up that much real estate. Right, there's not a deficit. You know? Yeah, no, I know. So it's like filling up your life so that it's full. Because here's the thing is that what you are offering to someone is a full, rich life that you are living that you want them to live with you, not a life that has a giant hole in it that you are looking for someone to fill. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. like that that can't be what that can't be what's on offer. Like in a way well, it's impossible. that's an inappropriate relationship. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's true. And that is probably, yeah, I, that makes sense. Like, if my life is not full um, in that way that I am giving off that, like, please fill this hole, 
you yeah. know, like, or like, please make me feel happy. Like, I need someone to feel happy. I would argue maybe don't use the phrase, please fill this hole. <laughs> I, I mean, don't know. I, maybe on the it third works date. For me. Third date, maybe. <laughs> I, d- I did say that, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks for coming in and doing this, Jason. It was, it, that was wonderful. Was it too? It You're was so I, thoughtful. Was I too? I'm concerned that I was too mansplainy. No. No. No, it was good. It was good to get the we, other we perspective. Need a man's I want to give up. I want to. I don't want it to be over. And with that, we said goodbye to Jason and made a date to catch up with Julia a few weeks later to Hello? see how and if Hi. she's changed yeah, her ways at all. Me. Yes. Hi. 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 It's Julia. Hi, Julia. Hi. We're connected now. Here we are. Hang on one second, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Here I am. Cool. Ready to go. Oh, great. How are you? I'm fine. After our conversation with Jason, Julia actually took some of his advice. She's saying yes to more dates. She's not projecting into the future every time she learns a new detail about a person. And in general, she's just trying to chill out a little bit more. Right after that conversation, I went on Tinder and I started a conversation with someone and they said, hey, just to let you know, like I just got out of a relationship and so I might not be totally ready to like really date, but... If you want to get a beer, like, let me know. And uh, usually I'd be like, oh, cool, thanks. Never mind. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but then this time I was like, okay, fine. That's fine. And he's also bi, which I was like, n- I was like, not, I was like, not sure. Like, oh, I was, my like, God, that's the into. best thing that ha- ever happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, this guy's awesome. He was totally... <laughs> Totally cool in a lot of ways. He it's just like compli- it's complicated. Like he really is not like over his ex. He's still living with his ex girlfriend. Mm. So well, here's what you do know. Yeah, that guy is not afraid of commitment. Yeah, he'll stay with you even after I know you guys break <laughs> up. He'll just stick around. What have you learned from producing this series mm-hmm. about dating and love and relationships? Uh I don't know. You know what I've learned? No one knows what the hell they're doing. Right. And there's like, it's like people will give you advice and will like try to help you in the way, th- in the best way that they can. Mm-hmm. But in the end of the day, everything is so, so arbitrary and like random. Like no one knows who they're going to fall in love with. Even like what you think you like and you're, what you think you're attracted to, it doesn't matter like all that much. <laughs> Because when someone, when you meet someone you like, they could fit none of what you thought you liked before. None of that description. Right. None of that. It's magic when it happens. Yeah, it's magic. And it's like really just like, you can't really plot it out. You can't control it. And like there's, people have all these different strategies and they have all these different ways that they've made it work. But like no one can tell you how it's going to work for you. Um, they can only tell you from their own experience. Right. You know, it all comes from a great place, you know? People want to help other people, and they want to tell other people how it worked for them. Yeah, people love love. Yeah, people love love. People love it when other people fall in love. Mm-hmm. You know, people... I've, I've had relationships where, like, I've been walking down the street with someone, and, like, we're so in love, and, like, people literally stop us and be like, you're so cute. <laughs> and, like, give us, like, food, free food in restaurants. That happens. <laughs> I had this convenience store guy, this, like, clerk at a convenience store be like, oh, it's, like, being like, you have a very special thing with the way that, that he makes you laugh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, whoa! You know, it's like you get so much attention when you're in love. It's rare. It's also something that I've learned. Mm-hmm. It's rare, but when it happens, it like feels so fucking good. <laughs> You're like, mm-hmm. finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'll wait for that. <laughs> the tricky and magical thing about love is that you can plot it all out in your head. The whirlwind romance, the house, the kids. But when it actually happens, it is a thing unto itself. And no one ever knows what that thing will look like or what it will do to your life until you're in the middle of it. You can go from wanting to be married and have children to saying, wait, no, this person's enough. This relationship, as it is now, is enough. Or you can meet someone and fall in love and get all those things you've been dreaming of. And then that person might go out for a pack of cigarettes one night and never come back. We are not in control of love. 
but it's comforting while we wait for it to happen to imagine we are. Next week on the DTR season finale, we're in Seattle with Scott. You know, I'm going to embarrass myself, but I've Googled how to date as a gay man. And there are a couple of sites out there, there's suggestions, but there is no playbook for how to approach dating. That's next week on DTR. DTR is a branded podcast from Tinder and Gimlet Creative. This episode was produced by me, Jane Marie, Garrett Crow, Caitlin Boguki, Matt Schultz, and Jorge Estrada, with help from Tom Cody. Our senior producer is Nicole Wong. Our creative director is Nazanin Rafsanjani. Zach Schmidt and Katherine Anderson mixed this episode. Additional production by Little Everywhere. If you're that busty cotton candy grape fan Jason's looking for, you can find me on Twitter at Marie. You can find DTR anywhere you listen to podcasts. Do us a favor and help us spread the word about our show. You can also find us at DTRshow.com. I'm Jane Marie. Thanks for listening. I know. You're like uh What is that? Do you, what the, is that? The mayor of podcasts? Is that No, that's Paul F. Tompkins. Um, <laughs> I think I think, you know, if anything I am like the treasurer of podcasts. <laughs>